Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you very much, Paul. Welcome, everybody, to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm your host tonight, Josh Taylor, joined in studio from the Tribune Review. You've heard him maybe on ESPN 970 AM, maybe on 105.9 The X, maybe on some podcasts on Trib Live Radio. The man I actually started my TV career producing for, Tim Benz, in the building. Maybe on the RMU hockey game five minutes maybe ago. Maybe on the RMU hockey game five minutes ago. Uh, if you Good saw point. a black Jeep Patriot screaming down Ohio River Boulevard after the overtime defeat for the Colonials tonight, that was me getting here on time, so... Hopefully you pay for no the loss. effort. No, well, it's a, maybe a mile over the speed limit. A loss broken. Not, not. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, good to be here. Let's uh, let's get to this because the story of the day obviously comes down from the NFL. Thirty-three players in total <laughs> fined for this this, uh, this incident in Cleveland. Twenty-one of them were Steelers. Mason Rudolph gets the biggest of the group. Fifty thousand dollar fine today. Uh, your thoughts on the fine because there, there had been a lot of discussion during the week about how he hadn't been. Suspended like Marquise Pouncey and Larry Ogunjobi and also Miles Garrett, but fifty thousand dollar fine. What did he get fined for? Good question. That's that's what I would like to know from the NFL. What did he get fined for? His head getting in the way of the helmet, for him not uttering a racial slur. What did he get fined for exactly? Because nothing that my, Mason Rudolph did would have occurred or was fine worthy, independent of Miles Garrett swinging that helmet and. For all the rationalization, for all the whataboutisms, for all of the half measures that are taking and the hypotheticals that are being thrown out there on Twitter, above and beyond anything else, what we all need to remember is nothing happens of consequence if Miles Garrett doesn't swing that helmet and everything else is coffeehouse BS. Let me play devil's advocate for about 30 seconds here. Is it safe to look at it from the... the hockey penalizing principle maybe he's the instigating guy and that way he no. has to get a penalty nothing he didn't instigate not not even the, the kick to the groin on the ground it wasn't a that? kick to the groin he was being pulled up by his face mask and he's trying to get away because he's pressing away from a 275 right. pound guy who's pulling him up by the face mask i don't think he instigated i think the instigating action was him being thrown down late that i will agree with right, so that's the instigating that. action yes. and anything that happens after that is if you want to say, I thought where you were going with that thought was you were going to say two minutes for retaliation. Yeah, you could have used that too. There could, you could have had that kind and of And if you say that, you know, he didn't do enough to quell the situation because he got up in the face of the guy. And he went after him after he had his helmet in his hand. I mean, the antithesis to that is what Tom Brady does, what Drew Brees does, which is just turn to the, to the ref and go, oh, 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 what, what, what happened to me? And he, what happened? And he, he actually he did that at one point. He, he did, do, did that, do that, and yeah, we're killing him did. for whining. So is he whining, or is he taking things too far by retaliating? Which is more? Which is the greater sin? I'll ask you this one. You say, which is the greater sin? Is the greater sin Mason Rudolph getting fined, or is it really Matt Filer for being in the wrong place at the wrong fine, <laughs> wrong time? Matt Filer got fined $3,500 just for being there. Well, yeah, I don't know what he did. I don't know what DeCastro did. In fact, you know, what's funny is... If you had told those guys as the moment it was happening, you're going to get fined $3,500 regardless, either or the both of them probably clear Miles Garrett off the pile in a more consequential fashion than what took place that would have prevented all this from happening in the first place. Like, I think because it looked to me like DeCastro and Filer were trying to stay within themselves and didn't act with egregious an egregious amount of immediate heartfelt um, impetus to go after Garrett. You know, my, my impression was they were trying to think their way through this and not go off the deep end and, and not get thrown out of the game and not get penalized, not get fined. Because in the old days, I think they would have cleared Garrett off the pile before they had a chance to take Rudolph's helmet off, and they were trying to keep their cool, and as a result, the whole thing happened. And they got fined $3,500 $3, anyway? What, are you kidding me? We, we're, we're talking about 20, 21 different players that were Steelers. 19 of the 21 fined $3,500. The only two that weren't, Marquise Pouncey and, J, and uh, uh, Mason Rudolph. The other 19, 3,500. Yeah, well, well, to me, I've, I've got a problem with it. It's an attempt to try to appease all parties from the NFL, and in so doing, you're making sense to none of them. So basically, it's the NFL doing what they always do. Yeah, it's what they, what they always do in situations like this. <laughs> all right, let's, let's move ahead here, because they got Cincinnati on Sunday. In the midst of all of this, with the, the fallout from Cleveland, with the injuries, with everything else, 
they still got what six more games to play, and they got to play one against Cincinnati here. Yeah, and I think actually Cincinnati poses, do I want to say a threat? I think, all right, let me, let me rephrase that. The Steelers pose a threat to themselves that they could lose to Cincinnati. How about that? Because Cincinnati really poses a threat to no one. But the Steelers are so vulnerable right now, as Mike Tomlin has repeatedly said this year, fragile, that I do think it's possible that they can lose to the Bengals. I'm not going to pick them because I can't, because by me picking against the Steelers, that means I'm picking the Bengals. And I can't bring myself to do that. But I do see enough holes in the Steelers, especially offensively, that they could lose this game even if the defense performs well, which I expected to do. But, you know, the offensive line for the Bengals has gotten a little bit better. The run game has gotten better since the Steelers last saw them. Um, they're using Joe Mixon. Now they're suddenly using Joe Mixon to a fault. Like, they're running him when they're down by 30 <laughs> just to run out the clock. Uh, the, the issue that they've got, I think, passing right now is Finley doesn't seem to understand that Tyler Boyd is his best option. And, he only got three targets in the last game. Uh, I would expect the ball to be pumped to Tyler Boyd a bunch in this game, so the Steeler corners better be ready for that. Here's what we'll do. We'll take a break. We come back. We're answer some phone calls. 412-575-2600 on the Borders and Borders hotline. Also, we'll read some tweets as, as well at Josh Taylor HD. See you in a few. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, putting new roofs on Pittsburgh homes for over 25 years. Call Ireland Contracting at 1-800-NEW-ROOF.